I would like to thank the Board of Trustees of Paris College of Art and Design, President-elect Hishorn, Interim President Lavender, and the faculty for inviting me to this commencement address. It is a privilege to speak at the graduation ceremony of one of the finest art and design schools in the nation. I'm also very grateful to Otis for the honorary degree. I will do my best to live up to it. I would also like to thank the parents and especially the graduates of the class of 2020. It is an honor to be part of your celebration. Graduates, commencements are an opportunity to reflect on what got you here and where you're going. And I would like to do both, but let's start with the present. You work hard to get here and now you're launching your career or embarking on more studies at a time of social and economic distress. So I would not be surprised if this situation makes you feel as if there's a roadblock between you and the future you envisioned. The human losses and economic turmoil the current pandemic has generated are exceptional. But this is not your first roadblock and it will not be your last. Roadblocks are an unavoidable aspect of life and a frequent feature of any creative career. They test your resolve, ingenuity, and integrity. And as a consequence, they reveal more about you than your degree, your title, or your success. Other people might not know the choices you make in response to these obstacles, but you will know, and that knowledge will define you. The current situation may make you feel uncertain, but don't shy away from your dreams. You didn't decide on a creative career because you thought it was a ticket to the easy life. You did it because you were compelled to create, imagine, and innovate. And so you dared to pursue your goals of becoming a designer, an architect, an animator, a writer, an illustrator, a photographer, or an artist. The challenges this period posed will expedite many of the discoveries about yourself you were going to make anyway. So you should embrace the opportunity even if or because it is likely to present you with daunting choices that will teach you about yourself and the world. This has been the case for me. As an exile, artist, father, and a frequently clumsy man trying to live a meaningful life, I've encountered my share of roadblocks. Some of them, like this pandemic, came out of nowhere. Others I saw coming, and a few I placed on the path myself. Had I not confronted one of these self-inflicted roadblocks 30 years ago, I probably wouldn't be talking to you today. I was living in San Francisco at the time and working at the Coherent Corporation in Palo Alto, designing laser systems. I've been writing and painting since I was a kid, and I was an apprentice to a painter as a teenager. Still, I decided to pursue a career in physics, partly because I love science and math, and partly because it was what everyone expected of me. But I remain in my life. In the evenings after my scientific work, I painted in my garage to sort out what a painting was, and also who I was while making them. As time went on, the expectations of my scientific work grew along with my desire to find more time to paint. Until one day, I decided I wouldn't go to work in the lab or the garage unless I made a choice. That was the roadblock I placed on my path. On the morning on November 1st, 1990, I drove south like I did every morning but instead of stopping in Palo Alto, I continued driving, heading west to the Pacific Coast Highway towards the Pigeon Point Lighthouse, about 30 miles north of Santa Cruz. For the next five days, I slept at the lighthouse, and since I was not allowed to be inside during the day, I walked the cold, windy beach, sat on the rocks, listened to the crashing waves, and rode to figure out what to do with the rest of my life. On my drive there, I thought I was going to Pigeon Point to decide whether I could justify living science for art. Yet, most of my notes from those days revolve around trying to understand how I could justify not devoting myself entirely to art. There were many arguments against the idea of living physics for art. Exile, for example. My family and I have bumped around with our suitcases through several countries, trying to make sense of new cities and struggling to reach a promised land that kept inching away. And so, with no knowledge of finance, I learned to evaluate my future in terms of return on the investment 
we had made in our exilic dream. And I worked hard to ensure we had that return. I designed a laser in high school, accumulated awards, patented four laser devices, and published scientific papers. I was determined to become a respected physicist, or at least a competent scientist capable of providing for my future kids a financially stable home. There was nothing out of the ordinary in my outlook, and I know many of you are familiar with the calculations I was making. Many of us see our choices and frequently our life as transactions. What is this going to get me? How does it help me win more fame or money? Does it make me more likable, more feared? Many of us go through the motions of doing things that seem meaningful and tender without actual meaning or tenderness because our actions are frequently means rather than ends. But in those five days at the lighthouse, I allowed myself to see life differently. When I drove back to San Francisco, I knew I would be an artist, even though I had no idea how I was going to do it. And I had nothing to show for that could justify that decision except the need. And how do you qualify or quantify a need? As an investment, it was a lousy bet. The few ribbons I had received and my grandmother's approval didn't compare to my accomplishments in science. And everyone is quick to tell you that our will is fickle and that the odds are against you. But for the first time in my life, I was placed in the urgency of the present and the way I felt when I was painting above calculations, guilt, or fear. A few times I wondered if I had enough skill or talent to succeed, but my decision did not depend on how good I was or how good other people thought I was. I was confident in the investment in self. The conviction of being fully in was the only return that mattered. Now, 30 years later, I know it was the right decision, but not because it has been easy. In the three decades since that November afternoon, along with the successes of the new ribbons, I've experienced failures, setbacks, disappointments, doubts of my capabilities, and a hand almost lost to a chainsaw. But I never expected this career to be easy, and neither should you. Right and easy are different things. It was the right decision because it gave me a chance to live an authentic, meaningful life. It was the right decision because I feel lucky every time I enter my studio and I get to explore my possibilities and confront my limitations. And from time to time, see a glimpse of the immensity and connectivity of all that there is. It was the right decision because I have made friends all over the world and I have had the privilege of collaborating with institutions and people for whom I have learned a great deal. And it was the right decision because I have the honor of being part of your graduation. So more than ever, I'm grateful to the 25-year-old who took a risk despite being confused, hamstrung by the past, and unprepared for the consequences. Today is your day. The efforts and sacrifices you and your family have made have brought you here. And now, regardless of pandemics, the future awaits. My advice to you is to get in touch with what you already have which is all you need. Put aside the idea of return on investment and focus on the present. Invest yourself in the now, in what you're doing as an end in itself. The future will come regardless and its richness will depend on how invested you are in the present. Enjoy the process. Find pleasure in the small, seemingly dull activities of your practice. And don't become cynical. There are secrets and wonder in all things. Look for them. Discover your purpose. It will guide you and illuminate the meaning of your actions. It will help you in the good times when temptations will threaten your integrity and in the bad times when you will feel you have nothing to offer. Give up the excuses, process the failures, and don't hold on to them for very long. And don't listen to the voices that undermine you, whether they are someone else's or yours. You become what you think about. So think about ideas and values that empower and challenge you to be better. If you think about trivial things, you will become trivial. Practice resilience and humility. You're going to need them. At times, they will be your only companions, and you will be thankful to have them by your side. 
Respect yourself and treat yourself accordingly. Take your heart and your dreams seriously, which includes knowing when to laugh at yourself and when to let go of your pride. Find mentors and role models, dead or alive, who can show you what matters and inspire you to carry on. It is easy to forget or to give up on your dreams, so it is important to have someone or something to remind you. And finally, stay hungry and always think of yourself as a beginner, especially if you become successful. Complacency and seeing yourself as an expert are the enemies of creativity and honesty. Give it your all. Don't go where the path leads you, but find where there's no path and show us the way. Otis College of Art and Design Class of 2020, congratulations. I can't wait to see what you do and what you will teach us.